Today, I wanna to break down what I think is the most simple approach to beginning your fly fishing journey for steelhead. So most people think that there's this connotation towards fly fishing that requires a ton of gear, lots of high-end and expensive stuff, but when it comes to Great Lakes Steelhead, that's really not the case. We're looking at a couple bare bones basic things that will get you on the water pretty easily. So the first thing I want to talk about is the actual rod. That's what everyone wants to talk about first, and obviously I have a ton of gear here, but that's because I fish a whole plethora of different species and stuff all over the place. You'll hear lots of guys talk about, you know, what you need, what you don't need. Well, when it comes to your fly rod, don't spend a ton of money necessarily unless you want to. High end of your budget, then go for it. But if you have a high end budget, that's different than somebody who's just starting out oftentimes. So when we take a look at gear, quite often we're looking at gear that will get the job done uh, for the beginner. Now, depending on which system you fish will depend on how what size rod you need. Unlike fly fishing for most other species, the rod is actually dictated primarily by the size of the fish this time, not by the fly you're going to cast. So, for example, Lake Erie steelhead are not quite as big as Lake Ontario steelhead. And that's probably the same for, for uh, like Michigan or, or larger superior Huron fish, depending on what system you fish. So, for example, in Erie, you might be looking at a 6 weight uh, or a 7, but you can get away with an 8. But for Ontario, you're going to probably want an 8, uh, maybe a 9 or a 7. Depends. But guess what? Every time you take one of those rods to a different system, you can still land fish. It's just not the most ideal. Again, jack of all trades, master of none, doesn't necessarily mean you're not catching fish. Because at the end of the day, it's more so about the angling ability of the angler than it is the actual gear. The more important thing to me is the reel. Your reel dictates primarily how effectively you can fight fish, but don't let that stop you because I've fought fish on the, on, by hand before, and I've also fought fish on a click pawl reel on a bamboo rod. So remember, it's not always necessarily super important, but if you're going to spend your money, I would spend it more so on a reel. That doesn't mean that it's the most expensive thing in the world, however, though. For example, this reel here is unbranded, but it lands fish. This happens to be a, an eight weight reel, but that doesn't mean that it's any worse off than say a six weight reel in an unbranded. You want a different uh, caliber of, of quality. And here's the thing to think about. You, not necessarily the amount of drag you can have, but the lack of the inertia required to start the drag. Picture this, you've got your spool and the fish takes off. Well, you want the least amount of startup resistance because you don't want it, the fish to snap you off on a quick break. That's where you get sometimes better quality with a higher end reel, like a Qualifly, you know, Carbon Tech, or a Maverick, or you're looking at, um, I have some Ross, like the Animus, or the, or the even the Colorado LT is, is capable of handling these fish. You want a consistent, smooth drag, and you also don't want necessarily you know, a, a reel that will spool itself out when the disc uh, breaks give a little bit. So that happens a lot in super cold weather. If you're fishing in the early fall, it's not going to happen as much as it would in January around here, for example. So I, will, I have a bunch of different videos on my favorite reels. That's not what we're going to get into today. However, if you're interested, um, I'll put a couple links in the, in the description below. So we've covered it. A rod that can get the job done, six to eight weight typically um, in these systems. Erie six, I wouldn't go that light for like Ontario or some of the bigger, deeper lakes where you can get some tangers, okay? But also in those deeper lakes, you're going to be able to hook into salmon. And so that's where that eight weight, nine weight comes in handy because you never know. And some of those 30 inch browns also, you never know. Um, I would always err on the side of also having some form of polarized sunglasses. They don't have to be expensive, but they allow you to see underwater a little, little bit better from above the water, uh, but primarily they're to protect your eyes, okay? Um, one thing that every new angler does need who's fishing for steelhead, though, is some of our sick apparel. Uh, I'll link this below. We've got some awesome hats, 
Got some awesome steelhead specific and rainbow specific stuff um, for the run coming up. Lots of good deals. Some of the softest, most comfortable clothes I own. I don't buy anything else anymore, just my own stuff. Shameless plug, but it'll be linked below. Now your line, your line for steelhead doesn't have to be that great. Why? Because around here, you're not actually casting all that far or that often. In fact, primarily we're doing a chuck and duck style um, in the Erie Tribs because of how close contact your fishing is. And with that, um, I rarely actually do a full-fledged cast during steelhead season. Doesn't mean I haven't done it, but remember that you're gonna be fishing typically lots of weight especially in these plunge pools and things where you're going to have fish holding. So it's not going to be pretty casting, which makes it excellent for beginners. So you're learning to fish, you're learning to cast, you're learning to do all these things really, really effectively um, that can graduate you into the spring season when, if you decide to go fish for trout, which you should. So when it comes to your line, look for something like a double taper or a weight forward that's inexpensive for you that can, you can bash around your first couple of seasons. Okay, because realistically, uh, a lot more of your indicator or your cider is going to be out of the water than on the water than your fly line is. Do you need a net? This is something that always uh, new clients ask me. No, you don't need a net. If you go with a net, please get a rubber basket, a rubber net bag. Um, it's better for the fish. And if you're not going to use a net, please don't ever beach the fish. Please don't bring the fish onto rocks. And this is a little PSA, I'm sorry, but um, if you're going to try and hand land a fish, you better be great at that tail snag. Um, I do recommend getting a big net for most anglers. And guess what? I've seen guys use tennis rackets that they've wrapped up. I've seen guys use, um, and gals use, really inexpensive nets. They've just upgraded the net bag. But please make sure you're not going with something too small um, like a trout size net because then you, you risk the, the chance of flopping a fish out and I shamelessly I've done that as well um, when I, I, we learn right but no you don't need a net but yes it is better for the fish because it, it contains them allows you to handle taking removing the fly uh, and, and releasing the fish gingerly I don't recommend using um, handling gloves they're not any better for the fish uh, in fact you typically see fish that have skin diseases where you would tail the fish. So please take your gloves off. I don't care. I do it in January as well. Dip my hands like you would for any trout. Handle the fish if you need to. Let the fish go. You get better returns that way. Now when it comes to flies and fly boxes, no, you don't need fly boxes. They make things convenient, but not necessarily any better than just putting them in a tin or in a baggie, okay? So don't think you need that. Uh, forceps, nippers, not necessarily. It just depends on how convenient you want to make your life. Um, I would, <clears throat> anybody really recommend, I would recommend anybody the, just any form of, of small fly box that's going to carry some essential flies. And I just made a video about that. I will link it below. Um, but, you know, it makes things easy. It makes things convenient and it lets you be organized. Organization is key if you want to continue to fish instead of pick through your stuff. Now, when it comes to tippet, that's dependent on your system and, and the way you like to fish. I fish anything from a 4X all the way to an OTX or 12 pound, depending on what I can get away with. If I'm fishing really low and slow um, and it's highly stained, I'll fish like an OTX tippet or a 1X tippet. But if it's super gin clear and really low water, I might be down to a 4X, 3X tippet, depending. And if you have any questions, I have lots of videos on my channel about what tippet ratings look like. So go ahead and check those out. Hopefully this video was informative. Please. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the other videos in the playlists below and a part of our cinematic series as well. Um, hopefully you're finding all the steelhead content really engaging. If you are, again, please subscribe. Check out the apparel. Got lots of awesome stuff dropping every week. Uh, link will be in the description below. And until next time, guys, catch you guys on the flip side. Tight lines.